Hi, Ed. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm good, only I lost you. I've got Ryan Lackey's face in front of me. <laughs> hey, Ryan, let me, uh, I want to get my question in, but I want his face in there. So let me, uh, I don't know what just happened, but somehow I lost Wyatt. There he is. Wyatt, I found you. Never mind. Anyway, yeah, you, you don't want to be talking and having Ryan's face in front of you, right? <laughs> anyway, how did Pro Day go? Yeah, it was definitely a good day, you know, not just for me, but, you know, a lot of my teammates. Um, it was really nice, you know, being out there with, you know, nine or 10 other guys that, you know, I played with um, next to for the last two to three years. So uh, being out there with all those guys, it was super fun to get out there and compete and have fun. Um, you know, personally, I think I tested pretty well. Um, some things I exceeded my standards, some things, you know, I could have done a little bit better, but overall, I'm, I'm very happy with my times and my results. Feedback wise, um, anything you're going to be working on from now until all of this progresses up to the draft and everything else? Yeah, I definitely talked to a few coaches, uh, a few scouts after, you know, after we were done doing all the drills and they just really emphasize, you know, um, you can't ever be flexible enough, especially at the edge position that I play. Um, always work on your bend, always keep it nice and, and sharp and crisp uh, and always stay flexible. Um, so that's the main thing, you know, I'm definitely going to hone in on and focus on, you know, these next two to three months until the draft um, and just always trying to try to improve on those things, always keep those things nice and sharp. And lastly, just is that what makes Pro Day invaluable to get to see where you fit in, to see the feedback you get and where you have to go from now until then? Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, everything's important. Everyone has expectations on, you know, what you should run, how, how high you should jump, um, how well you should move in the drills. Um, but, you know, overall, I think it did really well. Um, you know, like I said, some things I exceeded my standards, some things, you know, I could have done a little bit better. But overall, I'm definitely very happy. And I think I did really well in, in my position work. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go next to Sully Ingles. Yo, Wyatt. Um, how you doing, man? Good, how are you? Good, dude, thanks. Um, you know, looking just at your Twitter right now, you quote tweeted Jim Nagy about seven hours ago, and he said, one of the most underrated prospects in the 21 draft. And I think that's fairly, you know, a good way to describe it because you're just dominant on the field all the time. Even if the numbers don't show it always. Can you talk a little bit about that and just that mindset you're taking going into the draft and training for it? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I don't have the length that, you know, guys uh, want out of a defense fan or outside backer. Uh, but, you know, every, every single player has their own type of limitation, you know, whether it's uh, length, height, you know, speed. Uh, but, you know, I definitely have a lot of things that a lot of other players don't have. Uh, my football IQ, my knowledge of the game, uh, something that, you know, exceeds a lot of players, a lot of guys in this draft class, just how smart I smart I am on the field, how many different positions I've played and how experienced I am at multiple different positions. So that's the main thing that sets me apart, uh, being able to play a lot of different positions and communicate and know my role at, at many different positions. So uh, that's one thing that sets me apart. And, you know, like I said, every other player has their, their limitations as well. So, uh, you know, going into this whole draft process and, you know, continuing within the next two to three months and getting ready for the draft, um, you know, I definitely have a chip on my shoulder. I definitely want to be the best player I can be uh, and exceed myself past the other edge rushers in this draft class. Yeah, no doubt about it, man. And also just your preparation for the draft. I know a couple of years ago, Dalton went out to California. Dalton Reisner um, kind of got that ready. Do you have a plan? Yet? Like, are you going to head out that way, bring the guitar, hang out, and kind of just get ready? Yeah, my plan right now is, you know, definitely stick around in Manhattan, uh, stay in shape here. Um, I might head down to Atlanta for, you know, two to three weeks and work with Chuck Smith on my pass rush. Uh, like I said, you know, previously always working on my bend and my flexibility. That's something that's very focused and honed in with him and something that he's, you know, one of the masters as, you know, um, keeping you flexible, uh, keeping your bend as an edge rusher and definitely always improving your pass rush. Uh, so I'll definitely head down to Atlanta for a few weeks and work with him uh, and definitely get ready for rookie mini camp and OTAs. Cool. Thanks, man. Let's go next to Kellis Robinette. Hey, Wyatt. Um, what would you say your expectations are so far for the draft? Is there any spe special feedback you've gotten that makes you think you know where you, where you might land yet or what round you might go in? Yeah, well, you definitely get a lot of feedback. Uh, I mean, a lot of guys shoot you straight. A lot of guys, you know, tell you things that uh, may not be true. So um, there's a lot of things you, you can, and be can believe, but a lot of things you shouldn't believe. Um, honestly, I really... Uh, try not to focus a whole lot on that. It's just going to be a blessing no matter wh what, you know, round I get, you know, I, I'll be able to go in. Um, you know, some say, you know, two to three, some say three to four or five, you know, it's it's a wide, you know, variety of uh, projections on where I'll land. And like I said, you know, 
um, you know, the earlier is definitely the better, no, no doubt about it, but um, I'm definitely gonna be very blessed and fortunate uh, no matter what round I end up going in. Um, but obviously, you know, the goal is just keep working hard, keep impressing scouts and coaches uh, and try to go as high as possible. Is there any one thing you really wanted to show the scouts today that uh, you were good at and impress them with? Yeah, one thing, you know, uh, that's always been, you know, a specialty of mine is how quick I am laterally. So definitely I wanted to go out there and prove myself, uh, prove to them, you know, how quick I was in my shuttle, my short shuttle and my L drill. Uh, and I think I ran a very well, you know, very well times on both of those drills. Um, just because, you know, lateral quickness is, is so important, especially as an edge rusher and as, and as a defense lineman. So um, I went out there and definitely um, exceeded my standards on those two drills. Cool. Thanks, Wyatt. Thank you. Let's go next to Mark Lane. Who's your agent and what gym have you been training at specifically? And then also, is there anybody in the NFL past or present that you try to model your game after or just say they do a good job? I'd like to add it to my game. Thank yeah. you. Yep. Uh, well, my agent is Mitchell Moore Jr. and Pat Dye Jr. They're both with Sports Trust Advisors out of Buckhead, Georgia. Um, a very good agency. Um, I'm definitely glad and fortunate that I picked them. You know, they've been super helpful, um, super top-notch ag agency that's very on top of their game. Um, the past two and a half, three months, I've been training at the Exos facility in Pensacola, Florida. Um, I'm glad I went there. It was top-notch coaching. Uh, some of the best coaching I've ever received, especially for pre-draft training and combine training. Um, and then, you know, some players I model my game after, current and uh, uh, former. There's a lot of players I look after. You know, growing up, my favorite players was Clay Matthews. Um, you know, just the way he played, um, you know, similar statures between me and him, uh, same height and weight. Um, but some current players, you know, uh, playing right now that I definitely model my game after is um, edge rushers like, you know, Trey Hendrickson with the Saints, uh, Chase Winovich with the Patriots, uh, just outside linebacker guys, type of edge guys that, um, you know, play with a high motor and are very productive on the field. Go to Samuel Rodriguez. All right. So, how do you feel the strengths you already have are going to help you excel in the NFL? Definitely. Yeah. Well, you know, the strengths I have, you know, I'm very laterally quick, like I mentioned earlier. Um, being an edge rusher, you know, the 40 is important. You need to be fast. You need to be fast off the ball. Uh, you know, it's definitely not as important as, you know, how, how laterally quick you are. And those are two things I'm very, very well at. Uh, my hand usage is very well. You know, I went through a lot of pass first drills today. My footwork was very well. Um, I did did well in those drills as well. And then, you know, even uh, doing a little outside backer drops as well. Um, we had a lot of experience of that at Kansas State in, in our in our playbook for sure, in our scheme. So um, I've done a lot of things uh, that will transition into the NFL that I've been doing a long time here at Kansas State. So that's definitely going to be very helpful in the future. And then do you have any words of advice for the younger generation trying to go on this journey to get to the league? Definitely, you know, the main thing, you know, going through this whole process, you know, going through, um, you know, interview training at Exos, going through the Senior Bowl and all those interviews with all those scouts and coaches. Uh, then, you know, being here, um, you know, the biggest advice I have for uh, for college players, you know, going into uh, that want to play in the NFL in the future years is, um, you know, what you do, what you choose to do off the field and the decisions you make off the field are just as important on what you do on the field. Um, if you're a good person, you take care of business both on and off the field, you know, um, you're definitely going to raise your stock and you're going to be that, mu that much more attractive to teams versus, you know, if you're getting in trouble, um, if you're making bad decisions um, off the field, uh, that's definitely going to hurt you in a lot of ways. And uh, because coaches, you know, they don't want to deal with the immature type of guy. They don't want to deal with outside problems. They want to deal with the professional. You know, this is a professional business. It's a professional football league. So uh, if you can be a professional on the field and off the field, that will definitely help you out in the future. All right. Thank you. Let's go to Tyler Jeffries. Hey, White, how are you doing? Good, how are you doing? I'm doing good, man. Hey, I just want to say congratulations on, you know, the upcoming week. You're about to get drafted in a few weeks, and I, I just want to know how you're feeling and where your mindset is right now. And also, you know, you have a lot of accolades that you've been doing. You had 13 tackles for a loss this year, and you had eight and a half sacks. You know, both career highs for you. Um, are you going to keep that momentum? What are you going to do to keep that momentum going forward, going into, you know, a pros league and, you know, keep you motivated for how explosive you are as a player? Definitely. Oh, uh, you know, like I said, there's a lot of things I did in college that are definitely going to translate uh, into the NFL. 
So that's one thing I'm super blessed and fortunate that we did here at Kansas State. We, we ran a very NFL style type of defense. Uh, and even though we ran a four, you know, four, two, five defense here at Kansas State, um, the two um, defensive ends on the edges here at Kansas State were definitely hybrid type of DNs, outside linebacker type of DNs. Uh, and that's why I'll most likely be playing, you know, at the next level is outside backer. So, um, you know, a lot of similarities from from college NFL will definitely be a transition for sure. Uh, but, you know, the biggest thing I'm looking forward to, you know, once I get, you know, on a team and, you know, with the veterans on the team, uh, is definitely, you know, one thing that I love to do with football, you know, no matter how successful, you know, how many accolades I have is definitely always keep improving and keep learning. Um, being in the NFL, there's definitely going to be a lot of different uh, ways to watch film, how to watch film, uh, how to study NFL pro style type of offenses. Um, and, and that's the main thing I'm looking forward to is sitting down with those vets and, um, you know, learning from them and them teaching me certain things about the NFL, what to do, what not to do. Um, just always expanding my knowledge on the on the NFL game. Let's go next to uh, Herbie T.O.P. Hey, White, thanks for taking the time here to chat with us. Uh, a couple of questions here for you. What, what do you think, the first one, what do you think is your biggest regret from not being able to compete in Indianapolis because there was no actual combine this year and you were invited? Yeah, you know, it definitely suck, you know, not being able to go to Indianapolis and competing with, you know, a bunch of the, you know, the, the top 300, you know, best players in college football. Um, you know, being in the edge group, there was a lot of, you know, this is a very strong class with the edge guys, you know, a lot of very talented guys. Um, I actually trained with a lot of top-notch edge guys, and that pushed me and made me better. Uh, but, you know, the biggest regret you know, is, is definitely, you know, just being in Indianapolis, you know, and especially being a guy who was invited. Uh, definitely sucks, you know, not being able to go there and uh, performing at one of the biggest stages, you know, one of the biggest job interviews um, of your life. So, um, you know, it sucked for sure. But, you know, the 300 other guys who got invited as well, you know, weren't able to experience that just like me. So um, that's why Pro Day and the Senior Bowl was so important for me. Just to go out there um, and showcase my skills um, and just definitely do the best of my ability at those two days for sure. And then two quick follow-up questions here. You mentioned your hybrid role at K-State. Uh, from the teams that you've talked to so far, you get the sense that maybe the three-four lineman is what they're looking at you for in, at the next level. Yeah, I'll definitely be playing, you know, outside backer type of position. Um, certain teams, you know, I say that, but the, the main teams I've been talking to definitely I'd be an outside backer. Mm -hmm. uh, I may be a little undersized, you know, as a true four three hand down defensive end, hand in the dirt type of guy. Uh, but, you know, I did that at Kansas State, so I've experienced with that. And that's what makes me so versatile. You know, I can do that um, and I can play outside backer with all the dropping experience and man to man coverage experience that we had it here at Kansas State. You know, like I said, you know, the defense we ran here at Kansas State was so similar to a to NFL, uh, you know, style type of defense. So that's just one thing I'm super blessed, blessed and fortunate to have have done here at Kansas State. And my final question, I have to ask this because it's an obligatory question for me. I covered the Chiefs for the Kansas City Star. Have you had any conversations with the Chiefs? And what would it mean to you as a Kansas kid if you were to stay local and play at Arrowhead? Yeah, you know, I've had two conversations so far with the Chiefs. I have another one, um, I believe, this Friday. Um, so, you know, playing at playing at Kansas City, that'd be super awesome to be a super awesome place to be at, you know, especially how successful they are right now. And um, they're definitely going to be successful, you know, the next years down the road for sure. Uh, you know, with Coach Reed being there, being an awesome coach, um, and, you know, teams with, you know, such a such a good quarterback like Mahomes. Uh, he's a great player and having a good, good quarterback on a team usually means success. So uh, and even, you know, with the defensive ends and, the you know, the whole defense at Kansas City. Uh, playing there would be a truly an awesome experience being underneath guys like Frank Clark. Uh, that'd be so, so awesome to learn from a vet like him. So, um, you know, I'm definitely gonna be fortunate and blessed wherever I end up going. Uh, but, you know, the Chiefs would be awesome as well, just because um, I grew up an hour from the Chiefs and that'd be a super awesome experience. Let's go last to Paul Gant. Wyatt, how are you, sir? Dude, good. How are you doing? Doing well. So, when did you realize that you could play in the NFL, that you had the ability, the skills to play in the NFL? Did it happen this season? Did it happen? When did that happen for you? Yeah, well, you know, growing up and, you know, going through high school and college, football was always my number one passion. I always loved football. I always loved going out there and competing. Uh, being in the team environment was something I always loved, being a leader and stepping up and leading other guys to be successful. Uh, but at Kansas State, you know, I really, I really, you know, started to believe in myself that I could play at the next level after my redshirt freshman year. Um, I started eight of the 12 games as a, as a retro freshman. Um, I got freshman All-American, and that was definitely a big boost of confidence that I had. You know, it really raised my eyebrows and uh, really gave me that confidence and, you know, you know self-confidence in myself that, you know, if I, you know, take these next two or three years seriously and ball out uh, and just in, increase my stats and increase my leadership and my, you know, my overall football skills every single year, um, I'll definitely have a chance. 
you know, sitting here now um, and accomplishing, you know, s small goals every single step by a time. Um, definitely here. And, um, you know, I've been preparing and training so hard. I know just like anyone else uh, getting ready for this whole thing. Um, definitely trying to impress the teams, you know, uh, physically and mentally in the, you know, in the classroom. Uh, but, you know, definitely, you know, I always believed myself, always knew I could do it. Um, now I just got to go out there um, once I'm on a team and just show out in the NFL. Best of luck to you. Thank you so much. Sneak one more here, Griffin Floyd. Hey, Wyatt. So you said that uh, you're looking at playing three, four defensive end in the NFL. What teams have you talked to in that respect so far? Yeah, so, you know, a lot of the teams I've talked to, that was um, every time they, you know, a lot of a lot of the teams in NFL, um, you know, they would always ask, you know, well, why do you have any questions for us? And, you know, one question I always asked, uh, do you guys run a 3-4 defense, a 4-3? Uh, what's your defensive line, you know, fronts and schemes like? And it seems like most of the teams, you know, say we we run both 4-3 and 3-4. Uh, so, you know, every, every team, every defense runs a little bit of everything. Uh, but, you know, some of the teams that really run a true, you know, 3-4, um, teams like, you know, the Cardinals, the Bengals, those are two big teams I've been talking to. Uh, especially two teams I'd be playing outside backer for. But then a few teams I've been talking to that run, you know, true four threes with a hand in the dirt type of defensive end. Uh, there's a lot of teams like that as well. Um, but like I say, you know, being at Kansas State and, you know, playing a mixture of both a three, four D and a, and a four, three defensive end with hand in the ground. Um, very, you know, very experienced at both positions. So I'm definitely, you know, thankful for that.